Well then, hello and welcome to um, our live session, our seventh live session, where we are finally going to get back to the Wellington after sort of like a bit of a long period away because of like messing around with internet connections and sorting everything out. So as hopefully you're seeing this um, a lot better and a better better quality um, to actually show you this. We have got some spraying going on. So uh, sit back, relax, get joined in and um, don't forget, get on the chat and uh, just make any sort of comments, questions, answers, and I'll answer them as we go through this build. So let's just switch you back to um, the actual model itself. All right, so hopefully you're getting a much better quality now now i've already done some preparing for tonight so as um, we can view our wellington and move along with our wellington quite nicely we're going to be uh, basically doing the camo pattern just on top of here i've got this wing for us to start with and then as this is drying we can move along with this side and, and just move along with the steps so um as i say Get those comments in and i'll do my best to answer them as we move along so first off hopefully you're enjoying the quality let me know because um you know i'm not seeing what you're seeing at the moment so um let me know if that's any good but what we've got is we've um, primed all our model nicely um we've, we've cleaned it up make sure we've got no sort of uh, grease or grime or anything like that as we've already sort of shown you where we got up to um, and then we're going to start doing some um, actual spraying now when it comes to camo patterns there's a few ways we can actually go about this um, and I do think it's like a personal sort of preference here is um we could go off now and do some pre-shading that's where we do all those black bits all on here then we'll spray our first camo pattern on top um, now when we do that the problem is when we've got two colors to put on here um, it depends it really depends how you go about it because I mean you can start off with the first color do your black priming then we sort of do the pattern of our first color um, and then move on to second color I personally don't like that I personally like to just blast all over this with the first color get it all down straight away but in doing that method right we're going to kill all the pre-shading for all all our green bits that we're going to do so then it's sort of like we mask up and then potentially we should prime again and then do the pre-shading again and then do our green color so what i personally like to do is forget the whole pre-shading side of it right um, and i like to sort of concentrate on let's get the base color down then we do our bleaching and post shading then and I just find it's a bit easier to sort of um, work along with the colors because what I've done what we're going to do to start off with in, in this method of showing things I mean you know um, I've done loads of other videos if you want to go see the other different methods but for this one we're going to start off with um, just doing our base color so um, what I'm going to be using is our extra acrylics here this is um, ref dark green when it comes to if we could just focus maybe uh, when it comes to extra acrylics i do find um, they are a bit of a intermediate type um, paint um, because they're not so easily just kind of like mix them 50 50 spraying spraying nicely they can be a little bit temperamental but their colors are a good match um, so whenever it comes to sort of our RAF colors I do like to use their dark earth and dark green find they're a really good color match and gives you um, a, a pretty good color um, color match for your, your typical dark earth and dark green so with these what we're going to do we're going to start off with I've done my homebrew finish there is a video on Dennis Models website if you want to go check that out uh, maybe after this and it shows you how to make your homebrew finish I personally feel that you know this homebrew finish is actually better than extra acrylic sort of branded finish that you go out and buy and use for this um so that's a good one. Also with this, as I say, it's a bit of a temperamental paint. It does sort of get a bit bitty. Um, once you've opened it and used it for the first time, uh, and you've used it a few times, 
it does get a little bit bitty, dries up, it kind of gets mixed in with all the paint, and you can get horrible chunks and stuff. So, you know, shake it, but leave it for five or ten minutes. You know, don't sort of shake it straight away and pour it straight away in there because you're potentially going to get some bits in there. Um, so we're going to start off homebrew thinners first, right? Because you know, we do have a little bit of a reservoir down in here and we want the first uh, what to come out first is you want it to be finished you don't want to have this paint coming out through your nozzle first because it's going to um, clog up your, your airbrush a bit quick and you'll see why in a bit because I mean we pour this in here and it is pretty thick paint right so you could probably get away with like a, a 60 to 40 percent paint ratio because it is pretty sort of thick Right, and then we get out a brush and we can just mix this up rather nicely. While I'm mixing this, I'll just read some of your comments. Okay, I've got some comments here. I'm just mixing this. Um, just had a comment about um, AK's acrylic gloss and satin varnish. Um, they're good, and you can't really you know go much wrong with it. But I have used a lot of. Um, shall we say, a lot of sort of matte finishes, glosses, and all this kind of stuff. Um, and in, in the end, I have kind of gone with, you know, you, you just can't beat good old the floor cleaner, which I'm just going to quickly show you. Um, I know it's maybe a bit tricky to get hold of in some countries and stuff, but good old Pledge, multi-surface wax, it's just such a cracking gloss to use and then when it comes to mattes i mean i just can't help but um out of all the mattes i've used i do love um, the matte uv varnish by um windsor and newton it's sort of like the one to go for and then as for satins actually you know what I, a satin i could actually go off and use the ak interactive varnish for something like that they are they are quite good in that respect um it's just, I wouldn't stick to a complete and utter sort of, you know, stick to that one brand. I mean, I like to sort of whatever brand's good for the job, you know. Don't don't just kind of go, okay, I'm going to stick with AK Interactive and that's it. Um, there's so many of us out there. Um, but moving along, you know, we're just going to sort of test, see how this is flowing out. It looks like it's flowing out nicely after about a 60-40% mix. You know, if it's spluttering, your paint's probably a bit thick, add a bit more um, flow improver, uh, sorry, not flow improver, add some more thinners. If it's looking a bit thin and weak, um, you're not going to get great coverage, so you might want to add a bit more paint. Um, but yeah, just quickly blast a bit through, test it. Also, with, with these AK Interactive paints, as I say, you could have some bits. So what's going to potentially happen is, is these bits are going to come down to the nozzle end. It's probably going to be the first bit that comes out your airbrush is going to be a bit bitty. So a bit of a, a blast, I like to do a bit first. And I've just noticed a little spit of a bit come out there. This is what I mean about these paints. They, they are a little bit of a pain in that respect. So before you spray your model, I do like to just make sure we ain't got no bits going on with that. Um, just a quick read as well. Da -da -da. Uh, someone's asking about compressors. I mean, really, you can get sort of any brand of compressor, but when it comes down to it, really, at the end of the day, when it comes to compressors, just make sure it's got a tank on it. Um, I have done a video, actually, on uh, basic airbrushing, which goes through everything about, you know, what airbrushes to buy and compressors. So maybe check that one out after this. All right, so we're just going to start off with a nice, light, misty coat. All right. Keep it nice and misty. Now we are in real time here, so you know we're going to have to do some real time drawing. So it's always good to have those questions and answers while we let it dry. Hopefully, as you can see, I mean I've hardly sprayed anything down there. Right, it's just a light misty coat. I'm just cutting to air, 
just to let it sort of dry off a little bit. Um, you may also notice with these paints, because as I say, they're a bit more temperamental, they're not as sort of user friendly. Um, you can almost see how it goes down nice and misty, but then it likes to kind of contract and sort of pull up. Uh, maybe I could get you in with a zoom. I don't know if that's a bit too much, but hopefully you could sort of see how it sort of kind of pulls up and it gets a bit blotchy. Um, it's just the way the paint is, which is why with these paints, you really need to sort of be looking at um, um, doing some light coats. You can't be going off and just blasting this all day in one big blob, trying to get fantastic coverage straight away. It's gonna go a bit nasty. So we do need to keep it nice and fine throughout. I mean, really you could just do with doing nice, quick, simple, misty coats, you know, constantly throughout this. And because we're doing thin coats, it does dry rather quickly. So we haven't got to, you know, spend ages waiting for it to dry. Although we're doing these thin coats and we're probably doing a lot more thin coats than normal, you know, it does dry rather quickly. So again, I've just put another misty coat on there and I'm just cutting to where just drying that off just nicely and it's drying pretty pretty quick okay so moving along again with another coat let's try and make sure we get away any sort of leading edges I right, want to make sure we get them it's okay as well to just go a bit further than you need to right just to make sure we don't sort of end up not spraying an area that needs to be sprayed you know we're going to go over this we mask it up and go black underneath and stuff so just go that little bit further just to make sure you get everywhere all right just try not to get it too wet as soon as you start see if you see it going wet just move along to another part of the model but what you'll find as well is as you do build up the coats it will start to play a little bit nicer with you because it likes paint. I do find that paint likes to stick to itself. Um, you know, if you've got two different colours or two different brands, you know, it, it. You know, you can have. You know, it does get a little bit tricky. But if you've got the same colour and the same brand, they do like to start to stick to each other. So although you saw those problems at the beginning where it went a bit blotchy, right? It does sort of help once you've got more of that same paint there and so you can see that's sort of coming together pretty quickly getting good coverage i'm cutting to wear constantly just to dry it just to speed things up right making sure it looks dry and even touch dry or well, you don't want to be touching it too much right get those leading edges Make sure you get all the different angles. Right, and we are really starting to get some good coverage now. There we go. I think that is probably going to be enough coverage for this job here. Yeah, that should be good enough. As you can see there, just cut to air, and that should be good. Now, um, this is very flat now, right? We haven't got really anything going on. We haven't done any pre-shading, so we haven't got anything sort of fancy coming out of this. So this is where our bleaching and post-shading is sort of going to make this build. Um, so what we've got in here, we've got just a little bit, actually, a nice amount in the bottom of the cup. Uh, and when it comes to bleaching, bleaching is where we um, take our flat, dark earth colour here, which has got nothing going on with it. Um, and we want to sort of represent sort of like, um, you know, weathering, um, like, you know, the sun is bearing down on the paintwork and it's sort of fading it that little bit. Um, so it goes a lighter colour to what um, the, the, the main colour is. So for this... 
we can get ourselves out a bit of um, extra acrylics white. Now, when it comes to um, you know color mixing, you want to be sort of keeping with the same brand. Um, you can sort of get away with other brands, but it's best to stick with the same brand. But first off, we want to get our thinners in here, wherever I put it. There we go. And this is where we're sort of going to add, you know, just sort of guesstimating a nice bit of extra thinners uh, and our mixing paintbrush, right? And this is going to thin our paints right down, right? Because we don't want to come along and make a lighter colour of dark earth and spray it on and have 100% coverage and, you know, completely sort of change the colour completely. We want transparency. Transparency where, you know, we put a lighter colour on top but the, the colour underneath is still sort of showing through a little bit. Um, this will just sort of... Um, give us that sort of nice um, it sort of kind of blends all the colors in together um, and doesn't sort of you know, give us different colors going on it's all about blending in nice and subtly so with the white right which I've already sort of shaken up right but I don't want to be getting bits as I say so I have left it in fact that kind of reminds me if I just give our green a bit of a shake then that's going to be all good for when we need to use the green. Right, and then we're just going to dip in here with a nice little blob of white. All right, now this is where, um, because I've already done some um, bleaching, right, just to kind of move things along with this live video because I've already done some this side I need to sort of marry this up um, as close as I can sort of get it right because it's going to make one wing look a little bit different to the other but it's all just for for you guys for you know to, to teach you guys so I don't mind it being a little bit off but I'm going to try and keep it as close as possible um, so we've got this really thinned down to be nice and transparent and a little bit lighter I'm going to blast through a load first right because we have remember we've got this little reservoir in here which is going to be our original color and then it's going to be, should be coming through lighter and thinner All right so I'm just going to do a little bit of a test just to make sure you know, we've got around about the kind of colour I'm after I'm just doing a quick bit of bleaching just to see how that's coming out and actually I feel like I could add a little bit more white All right so I'm just going to clean my paintbrush off in some clean water to make sure it's clean All right we don't want to be dipping dirty paintbrushes into a nice pot of clean white let's make that a little bit more whiter also i mean um problems that you're potentially going to be having when doing your spraying is nine times out of ten it's going to be down to sort of your airbrush cleanliness right so before i came on here live i cleaned out my airbrush i gave it a nice clean took it apart a little bit cleaned it out always going to be good especially when you're doing bleaching and post shading you know all that sort of intricate spraying right always good to have a clean paintbrush because a lot of your problem is going to be you know things getting dirty i'm just going to get into tissue because when we do bleaching uh, one of the things is going to be right your needle is going to start kind of getting you know a bit of dried up paint on it all right, so I'm just cleaning this and we want to sort of periodically keep cleaning it um, as you're going along spraying you'll see how the characteristics of your spray pattern is going to slowly sort of change because as you're spraying your needles get in a bit of paint on it it's drying up on there and it's going to change characteristics which is why we keep on changing it so you'll you'll see as you go along how that needs to be a quick clean so now my air pressure by the way is um it is around about 
maybe 15 psi i'm bringing it down you can bring it down even more this is very thin down so we don't need high pressure or anything like that um, for spraying because you know we it's not going to take much to spray this out nicely because it's got so much thinners in it so we don't need a lot of air pressure uh, and because we're getting in close if we've got too much air pressure that air pressure is going to blow back and it's drying off your needle quick and it just makes things you know generally more harder so let's just start we're getting in you know sort of close maybe one inch and um, with this build, this is what one thing I, I really like about this build. If I bring you in, right? One thing I like is this isn't all about recessed panel lines and recessed rivets like you normally sort of get. This one has got all this lovely, lovely rib work that's going on all around it. So this is more of a spray job um, type thing to bring out the model rather than you know, normally it's kind of like recessed panel lines and rivets. So let's do some more of this. We're going to take this. Now, I've already done a bit of spidering, as you can see there. Don't feel, you know, it, it, I mean, I've just wiped that away. You shouldn't really, but these paints do dry quite tough. So I know I can get away with just like quickly wiping away any sort of spidering. You know, it's gone. Um, and the paint's you know nice and tough, and it's kind of not going to rub on it. Um, you, you can play it a bit safer if you really wanted to. You could put a gloss coat on top of here, so you know, you know, um, you can wipe stuff like that away with these. All right, so I'm coming in close, and I'm just, I'm literally, I'm putting down the trigger, and I'm just, I'm, I'm working on my biting point. My biting point is just pulling down that trigger, all right, just like a car. You pull down the trigger. All right, and then you just slowly, slowly bring back, just like so, just bring back the trigger until you just get that biting point where you just get that bit of paint coming out. You want to practice that. And, um, you know, the more you can control that, the better. All right, so I'm just getting my biting point, just getting that bit of paint coming out. All right, and then I'm just doing each one of these little little sort of triangles that's on here I'm almost sort of like tapping as well it's like because uh, we're sort of getting in so close I mean here we can just get the biting point because it's such a flat area we can probably hold it move it around making little um, figure of eights Tetris shapes all sorts of things just to sort of give us that bit of a mottled sort of look, right? Which is a bit easier to do, All right? And as you can see, that's sort of just kind of mottled that out a bit. These little triangles, they're a bit of a pain, really. I mean, you've really got to have some good control with your airbrush, All right? And I find, mate, I mean, it really just, it's, it's so tricky, but I kind of just like, I'm almost sort of like getting my biting point and then I'm almost sort of like tapping the trigger a little bit, just to sort of get it, just to just tap in a little bit of a, a blob of that little bit of, you know, paint going down. And each one's getting a little bit of our bleached out paint. So we're sort of getting this nice sort of mottling effect in there which at the moment might look a little bit strange right but once we get like our post shading on here as well it's just going to bring this nicely alive now this is going to take a little bit of time for me to work through this hence why i've already done a lot of it off camera so I can sort of speed up the light because I mean last thing you want to see me do is spend an hour doing this all over the model now you don't have to particularly worry about getting it absolutely perfect I mean a little bit of a, a mistake in here and there I do find adds to the flavor whoops and there we go I've just done a big blast on there which has created 
a nasty bit of spider in. Just going to clean that up quickly. And hopefully that won't be too bad. Let's just dry that off. But yeah, I mean, if you, you make it, uh, and actually, because that's just blasted out as a bit of spider in, I'm going to stop and I'm just going to clean my needle off. Right. I know these guards are on here for a reason, but you know wh when I do get in close like this, I do like to sort of take it off. It makes it so easier to clean the end of the needle. But you know, if you're a beginner, it's probably not a good idea because this is where you end up stabbing your needle into something. You know, it does hurt when you stab yourself with it, um, or you knock the side of the table and then you end up having to spend you know a fair bit of money replacing these let me bring you out a little bit there we go hope you're liking the the new setup because um it has been a bit horrid uh of late but um you know we've got the internet upgraded i'm using a different device here uh, hopefully sound quality is better you know as you've just noticed you know I can zoom in there as well as well as I do have two two cameras I can switch to switch to you know me as well as the model right, so I'm doing my little bit of tapping I have noticed as well now and then it doesn't hurt just to mix up your colour cup again, now and again, right? Because what happens is, because we're spending so much time on these tricky little details, right? Um, the paint's always trying to sort of separate, right? Um, if you've ever sort of opened up a pot of paint, the thinners are at the top, the pigments are at the bottom. You have to stir it to get it all going again. Um, and that's what's happening here as we're actually doing this is, you know that the pigments are going down to the bottom um, and as you're going through it's getting thinner and thinner um, and as it gets thinner and thinner it just means you're, you're not getting as good a coverage and you're probably going to start spidering a bit more because the paint's getting thinner and thinner right, but I'm just working my way through all these diamonds getting that biting point I like to that little bit of tapping as I'm getting into each one. We've got like a line that's going down here. I'm just going to hold my biting point. Run a little bit around here, maybe squiggle it a little bit. Because right, when it comes to, to um, this kind of stuff, being a bit random is what weathering is all about. Right? Weathering isn't all about... Um, it being precise and uh, square is nice and random. Now these little little notches along here, I'm just sort of holding my biting point and just flicking it up. Right, just flicking it up just to get these little notches that are just on the tips of the wings. I find that's a, a good effect. Uh, and all you're doing is holding that biting point. Right, so hopefully you can just see I've just kind of got all them sort of nicely bleached and on there. Um, and just along here as well. These are like little triangles, so it's a bit more tighter here. A little bit of spiraling. Just to wipe it off. Flatter areas here, so I'm doing me a little bit of mottling, a little bit of a spider egg. As I say, you don't have to like get every one precisely the same. You know, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a few diamonds here that are a bit more 
bolder with the bleaching whereas it's a little bit lighter here it doesn't matter it's just all adds to the flavor uh, also i mean this is going to be you know i'm going to be putting the camo pattern on here i'm just doing the whole thing because i i personally just find it's a lot easier just to um instead of like getting out the instructions and trying to follow these patterns and making sure i get all the patterns right by just doing that first camo pattern just doing it all over you can just crack on no messing about just get it all done um and there's no sort of being precise and everything just do it all then when we come to the the actual our uh, um dark green you know then we can put our pattern in and everything but we'll have it all masked up so we don't have to you know worry about the edges of um the camo patterns right so i'm just hopefully going to be finishing this off just getting this bit here always good to do a squiggle i mean these these panel lines here the ones that we do have um inside the panel lines we do we're bleaching it um it's i find it's a lot nicer to sort of squiggle patterns within the panel lines uh, i mean when you first start out it's probably going to be easier if you just kind of look maybe just almost totally fill in the panel lines it's just a little bit easier because right, you haven't got to get so close i mean really this spray job is probably a bit more of an intermediate sort of spraying because of how much more closer we're getting with all these diamond patterns so might not be one you want to take on i bet the boy races outside but you do get them in stairbridge if you know stairbridge Again, I'm just doing these last little diamonds. And then I'll have a look what comments we got. So if you've got any like questions and answers, I'll be having a look in a sec. So get them in. And we can uh, see what questions and answers we got and uh, see if there's anything about this I haven't. Or maybe you want me to explain a little bit more. But yeah, I think that is looking good now. So let's have a little look and sort of see. I mean, hopefully now, ooh, this zooms a little bit. Hopefully you can sort of see how, um, you know, all these diamonds have got a little bit of bleaching in there. Not all of them are like the same. It's not the uniform. All right. Um, and although I've had to like mix up these colours again, I think it's not too bad from either side. This is what I've already done. We've got our rib work that runs along here. Um, you can you can do sort of like nice lines um, going along here, but this is one seventy second scale, and that's getting really sort of fine. Uh, and personally, it does look a bit too as I, as I say again, too square, too uniform. Um, so I have tried to do like little bits of the lines going with the rib work, but also mottling it at the same time to sort of, you know, give it that weathered sort of look as well as, um, well, you got to remember this is bleaching. Bleaching is representing sunlight coming down. So um, I do sort of try and sort of really go a bit stronger at the top, right at the top, and then sort of, you know get a little bit lighter as we go down it to sort of represent you know the sun's more blaring on the right light right at the top at the tip of of the model um i do also like to to, to maybe sort of give it a little bit of a, a blast all over like a big sort of quick blast just to give it a little you know it sort of like blends the colors together that little last little blast there oh, a little spot come on there um it just brings them together um you know because we don't want these because this is all about it's all supposed to be the same color and it's just supposed to be representing weather and it's not supposed to be representing different colors coming out at you too much you want the colors to blend nicely so with that done now what we could do well first off we need to clean out our airbrush. Just want to make sure I am all done with that. I have done our little engines as well. Um, hopefully, as you can see, I mean, 
we're going to be masking it up maybe about here all right um and then this is going to be black underneath i've gone i've wrapped it around more than i need to it's just make sure you kind of do that because we don't want to be you know getting so close that we you know end up coming to mask it and we actually haven't painted the area that needs to be painted so and um, we've got them as well so let's clean out our airbrush just blast out what's left in here which isn't much right um we do have the um homebrew thinners right which um i'll just do be right out now actually oh bloody hell this is awkward okay there we go so we've got a homebrew um airbrush cleaner just here i like to give it a shake because there is like a bit of oil in here to keep our working parts moving nicely blast a bit in there all right I've, as you can see i've put back on our little guard here so we don't stab ourselves and stuff because we don't need that now and i'm just holding the end pressing down for air and pulling back the trigger and you can see that gurgling up rather nicely right, just like so and that's just um just getting all the parts we can't get to down here and gurgling all up then we tip it upside down right cleaning it out making sure you know any bits of dried up paint is coming out the color cup pen because the color cup pen is a lot bigger than our little nozzle down here right, and that's where we get blockages and then we have to strip down the paint that the airbrush to you know clear it all out and everything right and we'll do that again all right we don't want to be going off and blasting anything through the end until we've done this at least like twice so again we're just pressing down the trigger pulling it back all right there isn't a lot of air pressure here so i ain't worried about it spluttering up uh, but if you've got your normal maybe 20 psi you might be worrying about that spluttering up so do be careful all right and again let's turn it upside down um got no more questions and answers yet so do get them in i'm just gonna double check yeah no more questions and answers yet so do get them in because right, i'm going to be putting a gloss coat on a bit and we we'll need to leave that to dry a little bit <coughs> there we go and as we've already cleaned this out twice now i'm quite happy to just keep blasting this out out through the nozzle end until it comes out nice and clear all right so that is that so now this is where um we're not going to do our, well in this this way of doing it i'm not going to do our um, post shading yet right um, i find it's better we do the post shading when we've got both colors down because then we can really sort of blend them all in together plus it makes the job um, easier right because uh, if we did the post shading now okay we did the post shading now and then we do our green which then we'd have to do a separate post shading for that but if we just do it on one go it's, i just find it's a lot easier and it blends everything in nicer um personally that is all right so now we're going to do a gloss coat i'm going to do a gloss coat because because we need to put down our um second color right the problem that's going to happen is um because this is 170 second scale, I wouldn't go off and do freehand on a 170 second scale because it's 170 second scale. We're going to want the lines nice and sharp. Um, and you're not really going to get that by doing freehand, right? Uh, it's going to be better to mask it up. So, um, so before masking it up, I do like to save my work, All right? So we've got this side that I've done earlier. We're going to just start off with that usual, always start off with a nice, light, misty coat. Right, and this is all just to protect the work we've done. It's saving it. Right. So when we do mask this up, you know, it shouldn't hopefully peel up, you know, because it 
when we mask this up, we're going to put something sticky down. When we put something sticky down, we don't want to pull it off and it pulls away the paint. Right, as well as, you know, quite easy to nick it with a, um, a fingernail. You nick it with a fingernail and scratch it and, you know, that's going to be a bit of a pain. So I'm just cutting to air, which should dry this off really quick. Right, this, this gloss stuff really does dry nice and quickly. So I can probably come in with a light coat, not a misty coat or a heavy coat, just a nice light coat. Right, we see it get wet, we move along. Right, and there we go. Right, and that should be it really, because I mean, we're not sealing this in ready for decking. It's just giving our paintwork that we've already got a nice bit of a, a save, right? Ready for um, putting down our masking tape, our masking tape or whatever you want to sort of use really. <coughs> Right, and I may as well do this side because these paints do dry rather quickly. I can seal this in pretty sort of quick. Uh, I've not really had any problems with these type of paints. Uh, the only paints I've really sort of had a problem with really is the the Mister Color range. Um, is it the Mister? Uh, the Hobby Color range. Right, these ones. These ones that I've had a problem with where you wanna you wanna actually go off and probably leave them overnight to actually dry. Going off and sort of seeing it in like I am now is probably going to potentially give you stuff like cracking and stuff. So just bear that in mind. But most acrylic paints, I'm quite happy just to quickly give them a nice quick gloss coat like this. And this is saving this nicely. So this does need to dry before we um, mess around with it. So we could probably have a little bit of a a break maybe get some questions and answers in all right anything you might want to ask me and i'll answer it i may as well gloss my little pieces over here as well while i'm at it or maybe you might want to shout out or let us know what you're working on what builds are going on um or ask any questions about any other builds that are going on here at genesis models how they're coming along anything you want even personal to a certain degree i suppose doesn't even have to be about spraying either i mean there's other subject areas any problems you're having with your particular build at the moment but yeah those are all glossed up spraying that through uh, we want to clean our airbrush out as well ready for our green there's my kitchen paper towel usual give it a gurgle you may notice I've, i haven't changed my psi either i've left it at around about 15 14 psi you don't need a lot of pressure to spray out this um multi-surface wax floor cleaner it's, it is rather nice and thin. So another good thing about it, you don't have to do any thinning or anything like that. Give it another one. Because when it comes to glosses, you can't really tell how clean your airbrush is. So just keep on at it, even though it might look clean. Hopefully the quality is still coming through nicely on this. Hopefully it hasn't deteriorated or anything like that. Just let me know if it has or not. 
Let me try and speed this up. As much as I want to move along, I don't want to make the mistake of getting some uh, masking tape down while it's still a bit wet. Right. That does feel nice. I don't want to risk it quite yet. Okay, that's um, kind of dryish. I don't. I still would rather not risk it. In all fairness, right. But let's just get products I'm going to be using. Um, in the past, I've taught doing um, the old blue tack, rolling it up into sausages, putting it down, masking taping up all the. Um, missed out areas but really i mean this is like a nice new thing the panzer put a really cool stuff it's like a weird plasticine type stuff and it's just yeah it's pretty funky um it just it's really it's kind of like a it's sort of like solid but then it sort of melts down over time and conforms Right, so I mean, you could put it over a raised area like this, knowing that if you just leave it five or ten minutes, it'll just fold and conform and droop into any sort of, you know, corners or nooks and crannies or raised areas. And, you know, it just makes the spraying all nice. And I have used this several times, all right, sprayed all over it and everything. And it just seems to eat whatever you paint. Right, but with this stuff, I mean, you can't really tear it off because it just keeps going and going. You do need to cut it. So, some good old scissors. Right, it is tacky, so you don't want it to rest on your kitchen paper towel. Right, but you could cut off a nice little bit like that. And then what we'd do, well, first off, is I would go off and I would get out these nice instructions that actually come with the kit. Now I've just got to remember which one it was I was going to do. I can't remember, but the camo pattern is the same, so there's no need to worry about this at the moment. So um, it's kind of good to sort of orientate the model, right, with um, where you're going to do it. So if I kind of get this wing section orientated, I now know, you know, where it's going to go. And the whole idea is you sort of get a piece of this and you sort of shape it, not on the model, but maybe sort of just a bit before the model to get that sort of, I'm after this green shape just here. Let's move this across a bit more. I'm right after this green shape just here and I'm just shaping it just before I put it on the model, getting that general sort of shape. And then we could sort of place it down um, and you basically just sort of smudge it into place. Maybe just wrap it around the wing. I'm looking at all sorts of indicators. You know, we've got panel lines and stuff on here, which sort of shows it comes to about here. Um, and we've got like a bit of a, a dent in there, bring that across. Right, and we sort of press it down to a sort of a nice shape and 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 uh, put a few little squiggles in there, making it look nice and natural. Okay, this needs to come actually all the way across here. No big deal. 
we can actually stretch this quite a lot like so as you can see quite easy to to stretch it so it needs to come to about there fold that over right this shape isn't that good yet so again you know we can come in and just play around with it right that's kind of straight there push it out a bit making these little straight push it in right and we can get all these sort of nice patterns going on that should be on here right and that is looking good right and then the cool thing is um, as i say if it was over here it's just going to conform and what you want to do is just do that cutting off a piece here and there um we are coming up to the hour mark and as I said, I do, I'd rather sort of let this dry. Um, I don't want to sort of risk sort of smudging or damaging our work that we've already done. Um, by the time I've got this on and we start spraying, it's going to go well over past the hour. Um, but yeah, basically, um, we do this all over the model. And then we're just going to repeat the same process as I've just done on this wing. I'm going to get out the green. We're just going to spray it on. Right, we don't have to worry about getting perfect around these areas because it's already been masked up, so we ain't got to worry about that. We'll do um, the bleaching, which I've already shown you, so don't need to show it again. And then next week, um, we'll come back to this where it'll be, we'll have our camo pattern, it'll all be painted, bleached bleach and everything, and then we can um, move on to the next stage, which is going to be the post shading, which is sort of going to really bring the weathering of the paintwork together nicely. Um, and you've got to be a bit careful with that. So we'll go over that next week. So yeah, be uh, st stay tuned for next week. Let's just maybe bring this camera so you can see me. All right. So uh, stay tuned next week. Uh, we'll be at it again uh, with the Wellington six o'clock as always. So hopefully I'll see all you guys there. Get your questions and answers in. I mean, actually, there is on the Genesis Models website, uh, we've got a forum, and on there we do have a, a questions and answers section. It's uh, it's labelled, I think it's the um, show or vlog um, Q&As. Uh, just post in there any questions and answers, and I take those questions and answer them live here. Uh, on the live session so if you want to get them in first and I'll have them ready to go um, it's rather than you type them as we, as we go and stuff like that so get those in and, I could, and if you're if you've got like a question that maybe you want me to show you something it sort of helps me to prepare a little bit more for those more sort of complex things where maybe I might have to get out a model and sort of show you going through it so um, it just helps me prepare a little bit more if you've got any questions answers you want um, going for that so yeah hopefully you've enjoyed our live vlog hopefully uh, our live session has got a good better quality and everything's sort of coming together now uh, and we'll keep this going every week on the friday so until next time my name is Bill Waldron this is Jens Models and I hope you've enjoyed go off